Greetings to all our friends and listeners from around the world. A warm welcome to Red Ice Radio, coming to you from Northern Europe. I'm Henrik Palmgren. Thank you for tuning in and for your inquisitiveness and, of course, willingness to listen and hopefully learn something new. We're trying our very best on this radio program to give you a balanced approach to many of the fascinating and intriguing topics that we cover. Tom Horn is an author and researcher behind the website RaidersNewsUpdate.com. We'll get into some of the details today that are to be found in his book, Apollyon Rising 2012. He'll be sharing the secrets of the lost symbol, the forbidden knowledge of the Vatican, Washington, D.C., and the 200-year-old cipher hidden in plain sight at the Capitol Dome and on the Great Seal of the United States. Tom will give us a different perspective on 2012 and how it connects to an ancient cosmic conspiracy. 2012 was not only an important year for the Maya and for the founders of America, but for a number of cultures around the planet. Stay tuned for much more. Welcome back to Red Ice Radio, Tom Horn. It is excellent to talk to you uh, once more. We had you with us back in 2007, so we're talking four years ago. Way too long, but uh, finally, it's good to have you back again, uh, Tom. How are you today? Hey, it's great to be back with you again. And yeah, I, I thought it had been some time ago. It is. Yeah, it's it's uh, <laughs> crazy how, how the time goes. And, and uh, you know, here we are. We're, we're at the uh, at the cusp of going into 2012. Uh, exciting, frightening. Uh, what's your anticipation? We're obviously we're going to get into this, Tom. This is uh, we, we, we have so many people anticipating something, you know, something uh, great, if you will, to happen in 2012. Some people are not maybe expecting anything. Um, there's so many predictions surrounding this year, but uh, I wanted to try to highlight this with you, Tom, because you have a different interpretation of, of 2012 and what it might mean. Uh, and, and what if what if something else is happening? What if something more frightening is is in the works? What, what do you feel about it overall, uh, Tom? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> and it's interesting, uh, Henrik, because in the beginning, I really didn't have any interest in talking about the year 2012, just because, you know, plenty of, plenty of other people we're talking about it and writing about it, and um, uh, with my background, of course, you know, I'm a Christian conservative, so I didn't uh, go out of my way to try to put emphasis on the ending of the Mayan calendar or any other calendar like that, but what <clears throat> what happened was um, I, I thought I came across a discovery that we might have a chance to talk about a little bit later having to do with the Great Seal of the United States and its possible relationship to the year 2012. And so I started sending out a bunch of emails to different uh, scholars asking them if they'd ever heard of any connection between the Great Seal of the United States and the year 2012. And I was keeping all of this just real hush-hush. Uh, I wasn't intending to write a book, uh, which I, of course, eventually I did. But what happened was, as I, as I tried to find what other people were not talking about, well, you know, what wasn't on the Internet and all the 2012 research uh, communities, um, I, one, one short discovery after another started uh, convincing me that there really is something unusual about this year. Now, you know, it could be interpreted in a lot of different ways, and, and a lot of times when I do radio on this subject, people will say, well, what do you think is going to happen in the year 2012, and what preparations are you making for the end of the world, and all that, you know, <laughs> and, and, and basically I just say I'm, I'm not making any preparations, and the truth is it might not be anything more than the next, uh, y, you know, uh, the next Y2K. That's right. Uh, could, be, could be nothing will come from it. But what interested me in it was, uh, and what ultimately led to writing that book, Apollyon Rising 2012, was that I started finding common themes from various ancient cultures that seemed to be fixated on the year 2012. First of all, uh, that this year is, of course, tied to the procession of the equinox, right? The yeah. sun moving along the ecliptic. It's going to finally... Uh, uh, end and then repeat a 25,800-year full cycle of the sun through the zodiac. Uh, so that's extraordinary all by itself. But in the mind of the ancients, uh, especially the ancients that had an inclination towards um, interpreting these signs in the heavens, uh, it represented not only something naturally phenomenal, but a date of spiritual significance. And that's what kind of started standing out to me, that in the ancient occultic mind, um, many, if not all, of the ancients that I studied uh, combined apocalyptic prophecies 
around that date. Now, when I say apocalyptic prophecies, I don't necessarily mean the end of the world, um, but what I mean is that they tied important signs in the heavens, the planets, the signs, uh, to this procession of the equinox as a time of great trial, uh, stress of the nations, and that following this then would be almost kind of like a rebirth of humanity, a new golden age, a new form of humanity that would emerge upon the earth. Mm. And if we talk about transhumanism later in this um, in this uh, series of interviews, then uh, we can tie that back in. So that was the first thing. Secondly, I found it interesting that 2012 would not only witness the end of the long count calendars of these different cultures and the uh, and uh, the potential for great uh, trial and the emergence of a new form of man, but it also represented the return, the time of the return or the coming of their god or gods, and over and over these gods are depicted in their symbolism as dragons, uh, uh, great serpents, if you will, that also have the power of air, the power of flight. Mm. And, and so you have the, the Mayan feathered serpent god Kukulkan. Uh, by the way, also uh, returning at the same time in the Mayan mind uh, is the underworld god Bolanyakteku. You might have saw where he was in the news again, uh, you know, just this last week with that second discovery. Oh, yeah, that's um, right. That, that's pretty mm -hmm. pretty major, actually, because it it has been a struggle uh, to a certain degree, to kind of find the the uh, evidence for 2012. Of course, we have the Tortuguero monument talking about this, but a second one that's uh, that adds uh, quite a bit of fuel to this. But go ahead, uh, Tom. Right, it, it adds credibility to the fact that this was kind of a common belief among at least the Chilambalams, the shamans inside uh, uh, ancient Maya, that this would represent a time of the return of Bolanyak de Ku. Um, anyway, the Aztec. Uh, also set their calendar to end in the year 2012 with the return of Quetzalcoatl. Again, the feathered serpent, a flying serpent, something like a dragon. Uh, much less known to most people, and maybe not known at all until we, because I hadn't found this until we published it in Apollyon Rising 2012, is the Cherokee, uh, and they see the return of their feathered rattlesnake god. Again, you know, a giant serpent uh, god that has the power of flight. And then, of course, the Hindu Kali Yuga calendar is interesting here in that in the, um, the Brahma Vavarta Purana, which is a Hindu text, Lord Krishna tells Ganga, uh, Ganga Deva that a golden age is going to come at the end of the Kali Yuga. The Kali Yuga is the a age of the male demon. And this began approximately in the fifth uh, Mayan cycle and also ends approximately in the year 2012. And so... What I started coming across was there was a redundancy in these different ancient cultures. Uh, the prediction about a golden age of humanity, coupled with the return of gods. Um, and then, of course, as we'll discuss later, this gets even more interesting when you look at the esoteric beliefs of the Freemasons, the founders of the United States, and the uh, you know almost unfathomable idea that they were not only aware of this uh, 2012 dating period, but but incorporated it yeah. into the design and layout of the Great Seal, the the uh, Great City of <clears throat> I mean Washington D.C. Um, and this is seen in these 13 periods of time starting in 1776 ending in 2012 with once again the prophecy of the Kume Sibyl which is on the great seal who uh, prophesies a return of the gods and the, again the dawn of a new golden age coupled with the emergence of a new form of god man or demigod upon the earth so huh. <clears throat> there there are prophecies and calendar endings from diverse societies covering thousands of years of time that predict, number one, the end of the sun's procession through the zodiac. Secondly, that that time herald the uh, return or the coming of a great dragon. Thirdly, that the reign on earth, by the way of a messianic figure, which we can talk about in a moment, but who I think potentially could be the Antichrist, yeah. would also occur. Uh, fourthly, the appearance of that messianic figure would happen around the time of the final pope, potentially the false prophet. 
Fifthly, that it'd be a time of great trial on earth, which I think we're seeing right now. And then lastly, that uh, again, it would be coupled with the emergence of this new breed of transhuman, enlightened individuals. Um, but, but in each, the Maya, the Aztec, they, they focus on uh, not just the, uh, the uh, movement of the planets along the ecliptic, but they focus specifically on uh, uh, Orion, the planetary system Pleiades. In fact, you probably know that much of the Mesoamerican cities, the Aztecs, the Maya, they actually built their cities to reflect an alignment with the star system Pleiades. Uh, they were very concerned about Orion. Well, when you look at the Cherokee Indian uh, prophecies. These occurred here in America uh, 200 and some years ago during a whole series of apocalyptic prophecies called the Chickamauguan Star Constellation Prophecies, or what's more commonly known as the Cherokee Rattlesnake Prophecies. Uh, and these prophecies were, were actually very hard for me to find. I, I, I first got a hint about them, and it took me a long time, and we recorded this in Apollyon Rising 2012 just on like two pages. But it took me a long time to actually track down an academic that was able to provide for me through a university copies of the prophecies in English from the Cherokee into the English language. Oh. And what I, fa- what I found was that like the Maya, the Cherokee – uh, had uh, uh, prophesied the return of their rattlesnake god and tied it to Jupiter, Orion, the planetary system Pleiades, and the gods awakening from that area of space in 2012, and then their flying serpent would return. Very interesting, isn't it, that last week or just this week, they saw what somebody called a, a basically a planet size U, uh, UFO, um, park somewhere outside of Jupiter, but if you look at the star maps, it looks like it, it, whatever it is, if it's anything, and it might not be anything at all except an echo of Jupiter that happened to turn up on this, uh, on NASA's um, uh, star, uh, whatever they call that system that maps the heavens. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, it was coming out of the Pleiades region, so <laughs> that was kind of stood out to me. Yeah. But in any case, the, the Maya... Um, uh, I mean, like the Maya, the Cherokee calendar ends in the year 2012 when all this astronomical phenomena related to Jupiter, Venus, Orion, and Pleiades aligns, and it causes the power of the star systems to awaken. Now, let me just read you, if I can, very quickly, a part of their prophecy, and and you'll see why I found this to be extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Quote, at this time, 2012, of the fingers striking Jupiter, that Orion star system will awaken. And the Pleiades and Orion will war once again as in old. Jupiter and Venus will awaken to its destiny of time untime of cycles. Orion will war with Pleiades. Jupiter will war with Venus. In the year 2012, an alignment will take place both on the Cherokee calendar and in the heavens of the rattlesnake constellation. It is the time of the double-headed serpent stick. It is the time of the red of Orion and Jupiter against the white blue of Pleiades and Venus. In the year 2012, the Cherokee rattlesnake constellation will take on a different configuration. The snake itself will remain, however, upon the rattlesnake shall be added upon its head feathers. Its eyes will open and glow. Wings spring forth as a winged rattlesnake. It shall have hands and arms, and in its hands shall be a bowl. The bowl will hold blood. Upon its tail of seven rattles shall be the glowing and movement of Pleiades. The rattlesnake shall become a feathered rattlesnake, a feathered serpent of time untime. Sounds like Quetzalcoatl. Hmm. And upon the rattlesnake is also the Milky Way. A crossing of the Milky Way shall be seen at these times in 2012, and the Cherokee calendar shall end in the year 2012 with the coming of the Pale One once again, end quote. Hmm. And even the numbers, seven, and all the rest of it, um, it uh, could be, of course, very concerning, uh, and I don't want the, the whole show to get bogged down, so let me give you just two more. Sure, go ahead, Tom. Uh, of, these, um, of, of the things that stood out that then caused me to say, okay, I have to write the book of Polyon Rising 2012 because nobody else has written about this subject matter from this uh, point of view. So then there were two more, and these were actually the most extraordinary discoveries that actually caused me to write Apollyon Rising 2012. One was the prophecy 
from the Zohar concerning the return of the Messiah. Now, why this is important, of course, is that the Zohar is, you know, widely considered to be the most important work of Jewish Kabbalah, magic. That's right. It's a, it's a collection of books, for those that might not know. It's written in medieval Aramaic over 700 years ago and basically contains just mystical commentary on the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses, the first five books of the Bible, the Torah. Um, but in addition to interpreting the uh, Pentateuch, there is a section in the uh, Zohar called the Veera section. And, uh, and it includes a subsection called the Signs Heralding Meshach, or the Coming of the Messiah. And I have sent out this email to these different Bible scholars, a couple of dozen of them, asking if they knew any connection between the year 2012 and the Great Seal of the United States. And they all were emailing me back saying they knew of no such um, connection. Uh, and <clears throat> but, but my phone rang one day. And on the other end of the line was J.R. Church, a friend of mine. He has since died with cancer, uh, but he was, the, uh, for many years, the head of Prophecy in the News, which is a syndicated television program here in the United States. And uh, he called, and he said, Tom, he said, I got your email. I don't know of any connection between the Great Seal of the United States and the year 2012, but he said, did you know that in the Zohar, in the Vieira section, Science Heralding Meshach, when these 700-year-old Jewish Orthodox priests were prophesying when the Messiah would arrive on earth, that they set the date for his coming in the year 2012. And I, I tell you, <laughs> you could have heard a pin drop in my office because I had <laughs> never heard this before. That's right. And, <clears throat> and I had read the Zohar, you know, years earlier, and, and but it's, on, a, it's a pretty uh, short uh, passage, Tom. So it's kind of it, it doesn't stand out that much. Actually, it it, it tells a little bit about the uh, uh, the year associated with I think the the birth, um, the kind of the how, how the Messiah is supposed to grow up. But it, according to their cal calendar, we're talking about the year uh, fifty seven seventy three, right? Isn't that isn't that correct? <clears throat> that's right, and that's another reason, of course, why I read right past it, because <clears throat> my my brain wouldn't automatically take their calendar and extrapolate it into our Gregorian calendar. Yep. Um, and, uh, and in fact, <clears throat> 5773 starts in the new moon of this coming year, 2012, which is in September, and extends one year into the next year, 2013. And uh, but uh, so I told Jr. I said absolutely I don't know what you're talking about. He said, Well, do you have a, a Zohar, a digital version? I said yes, and I opened it, and he walked me through verses 476 to 483 in the Zohar to point out what an, until that time nobody had ever pointed out uh, that I know of, and that was, and so I'm giving him credit for this, by the way, uh, and that was that the time of Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation is going to commence according to this ancient text in the year 2012 when the kings of the earth gather in Rome and then they're killed by meteoric stones from the sky. So let me read this really short section mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> because the, the rabbit hole starts getting deeper here and this is where this really became fascinating to me. Um, here's, here's what they prophesied, quote, in the year 73, okay, 2012 to 2013, the kings of the world will assemble in the great city of Rome, and the Holy One will shower on them fire and hail and meteoric stones until they are all destroyed, uh, with the exception of those who will not have yet arrived there. And then it goes on to say, from that time the Messiah will begin to declare himself, end quote. <laughs> so now... One of the key things that I found really interesting about this seven year old or seven hundred year old Jewish uh, mystical prediction about when the Messiah would arrive in 2012 uh, is that the great city of Rome, according to this prophecy, is destroyed. Uh, something that I was aware of, and in fact, when J.R. Church was reading this prophecy to me, I, I I talked uh, on the phone with him for about two hours that day, and I pointed out to him how that this sounded almost identical to the prophecy of the popes, mm -hmm. wh where you have um, over 800 years ago, in fact, almost 900 years ago, something like 865 years ago, you had a Catholic mystic 
uh, Malachi Morgair. Pope Innocent uh, II had summoned uh, the bishop, Malachi Morgair, uh, to Rome to give an update on his diocese in Armagh, which is located now in what we call Northern Ireland, right? Mm-hmm. And while he was there, Malachi uh, purportedly experienced this uh, frenzied vision in which he wrote down the descriptives of every pope from his day to the final pope, from Celestine II to the final pope that he called Petrus Romanus, or uh, 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 Romanus, however you want to say that, Peter the Roman. And this is going to be the very next pope following the current one, Benedict XVI. Um, now, Malachi, though, also seems to indicate that Petrus Romanus is going to come at the same time of great tribulation that the uh, Jews in the Zohar refer to, the time of Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation, and that he's going to cooperate with the Antichrist for a while. <laughs> and then it almost sounds like that he's going to be turned against, and Rome's going to be destroyed by the uh, leader of the revived Roman Empire or by God himself with all these hailstones or whatever it is that's falling uh, on uh, Rome. 